Hello and welcome to another section in further maths. In this section, we'll be looking at um, the topic derivative of trigonometric function. But before that, I would like us to make a quick review on our previous lesson. Okay, thank you. Um, welcome back. Now, when you talk about trigonometric functions, we stated it last time that basically they are the sine theta cos theta tan theta. And I also said in our previous lesson that the inverse of sine, that is 1 over sine, is called cosec theta. 1 over cos is called sec theta. Let me separate them. And 1 over tan is called cot and theta. So these are the various trigonometric functions that we have. So there are six, one, two, three, then there are inverse, four, five, six. They have six basic. Now what we are um, considering today, we are still in the spirit of differentiation. Now when you talk about um, differentiation, we're here to tell you that when you differentiate um, a function that has a um, sign, your answer becomes cos. For example, if you are being given, um, find the y dx if y is equals um, sine 5x. Okay, let me use it to sine x. Sine 5x. If you should differentiate this question, now let's leave the 5 and the x. The an your answer should be in what? Cosine. So if you want to do that, that's, this is the differentiative um, constant. So if you want to differentiate this, you say let 5x b equals what u now you say this thing becomes y equals sine u and from our rule when you have um sine x or sine u the answer becomes cos u so dy du is equals cos u but we are not looking for dy du we are looking for dy dx in order for us to get dy dx since we've gotten dy du we need a function that will multiply, that will remove this, um, that will give us the x under and take away this du. So we need du dx. So that du will cancel du, we now have dy, dy dx will be left. So we now need du dx. And what was our u? Our u was 5x. And in our rule of differentiation, that had nx and minus 1. I said, whenever you're doing differentiation, always note this down. If you do that, you now have our du dx being equal to what? So du dx, if you differentiate this with respect to s, you have 5. So our dy dx is now equals dy du times du dx. And dy du is what? dy du. We got dy du as cos u. Cos u du dx du dx is what times 5 which is 5 cos u but what is u our u is what because u is not in this u is what 5x look at it here 5x so our dy ds becomes this is our answer 5 cos 5x now let me show you one unique thing about this Apart from knowing that if you differentiate sine, you have cos. If you differentiate cos, you have minus sine, not just sine. One thing you're supposed to know is that if you have sine x, you have cos x. If there's anything attached to x, then write out the, the, the thing that is attached to x, the number that is attached to x, then you, before differentiating it and bring out your answer. So like here we had sine 5x. Now what we did, bringing out 5, then we differentiate sine 5x according to the rule to have cos 5x. Now, if you want to apply this, like number two, like um, we have, um, if you differentiate cos x, you have minus sine x. Now, let's use um, this. If y if is equals cos 7x, now find the value of 
dy dx. Remember what we stated, this is 7x. So you say let u equals 7x. So our y becomes equal to cos. You don't put 7x in. What you have to replace it here is u because you say u is equal to 7x. So you now do dy du. Because you can't do dy dx. There's no x here. You do with what you have. And if you differentiate cos u, the rule says you have minus sign x. So if you differentiate cos u, if you differentiate cos x, you have minus sign x. So if you differentiate cos u, you have minus sign u. That's for dy du. But that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for dy dx. So we have to do du dx. So du dx becomes, if you differentiate this, remember our rule. I always like you stating it at each point. Remember the rule. So this becomes 7. So from this, our value for dy dx will now be equal to um, du dx times dy du, which is now equals our du dx is what du dx is 7 times dy du. dy du, you have minus sine u which is equal to minus 7 sine u so our dy dx the minus 7 sine we can't put u our u was what 7x now you can see that the same rule that played out in our previous um solution is still coming up here we have um cos 7x now, if you differentiate cos 7x, the rule say you have minus sine 7x. This is minus sine 7x. But whatever thing that appears in front of this your x, which was 7, comes to the front first before having the minus sine 7x. Now, um, you can see that if you differentiate tan x, if you differentiate tan x, you have sec square x that is the rule if you differentiate an x you have sec square x so that is to say if i should tell you to find the value of y equals to tan 5x this is our question number three tan 5x now you do the same thing what you have here is let's u be equals 5x so this becomes y equals tan u so dy du becomes sec square u and du dx because we are not looking for dy du we are looking for dy dx but this is you can differentiate u with respect to x du dx becomes 5 because remember the rule I keep saying it. Each time you want to solve this, just remember that we have n x n minus one. So this. So the value of our dy dx becomes dy du times du dx. So which is equal our dy du is what dy du is okay. Our du dy du is sec square u times du dx is 5 so we now have this to be 5 sec square u this is the value of dy dx but we can't stop here because there is u here but we have to eliminate this u so we now do y equals 5 sec square what's the value of u our u is 5x so we now place 5x which is our final answer so dy dx of tan 5x is 5 sec square x i think we've actually done justice to um differentiation of functions with this now let's go into logarithmic functions log have a differentiation of logarithmic function differentiation differentiation of um, logarithmic um, function now when you talk about differentiation of logarithmic functions um, there's the law states that if you have log of x 
your answer is 1 over x. And you can still write log x e as mean x. It means natural log rhythm of x. So don't be confused when you see lean x and in some of the context you see log x base e. They are all the same thing. So when you have this, your answer becomes 1 over x. If y is equals lean x, find dy dx. From this, from our law, I just said dy dx is equals 1 over x. That's all. And at the, but if y, let's do number two. If y is equals lean of 3x squared plus 4, it will be wrong to just write 1 over 3x squared plus 4 as your dy dx. This Is wrong it's not accepted because you just have lean this now you use the same um, a procedure we've been using in other part of differentiation what you just have to do at this point is you put it in this way you say let 3x squared plus 4 be equals u so y is now equals lean u so the y u remember is the y du is equal to what one over u but we are not looking for the y du so we need to look for the u the x this is u the u the x is now applying our law our normal law though we like writing it somewhere to avoid the mistake our normal law will now become 6x du dx becomes 6x because this is our n 2 times 3 6x plus constant is 0 6x so the value of our dy dx will now be dy du times du dx dy du dy du is 1 over u times du dx is what 6x so which is equals 6x over you. this is our answer but there's no u in our question so we now say dy dx is equal to 6x over the u here is what was our value of u you say let u be equal to 3x squared plus 4 so it equals 3x squared plus 4 now this is the value of our dy dx this is for logarithmic differentiation so what you need to do is you differentiate this before doing lean one over what you're having we just did the difference of this you put it at the top then before getting the lean i would like us to solve one more question number four um if you have um if y is equals um lean um let's say x3 plus 2x plus 4 Plus 4, what will be dy dx? We, we, okay, remember our rule. The first we have to do is to make it simple by saying let v equals x3 plus 2x plus 4. So our uh, du dx becomes 3x plus 2, and dy du becomes. Um, okay, yes, our uh, y becomes u, u. So the y du becomes 1 over u. So with this, we now have our dy dx to be equals dy du times du dx, which is now equals dy du, we got 1 over u times our du dx was 3x plus 2. So our final answer is now 3x plus 2 over u. But dy dx doesn't contain u, so it's now 3x plus 2 over what was the value of our u? Our u was x3 plus 2x plus 4. So, with this, you can see that the same thing is still played out. You differentiate this, you differentiate this, 
you put it at the top and use this at the denominator. So now the last part of this we have to do the variation of exponential function. I know we've been applying this. Exponential the rule says that if y is equals e x, then the y the x is still equals e x. Exponential function doesn't change. That's one good thing about it. So if we have if y is equals e raised to power two x, find dy dx. With this, remember our rule: you have two x. It's not just x. You say let u equals two x, so that the u dx will become two. Remember our rule in differentiation. I always state it each time we are solving. So that's the value at that point. Du dx is equal to this. But our dy, our y is e raised to power u, which make it making the y du to be equal to e raised to power u. I told you when you're doing exponential, it doesn't change. If this is this, this is this, this is the rule. So if y is this, so let's multiply. Dy dx will now be equal to dy du times du dx. So our dy du is what e raised to power u times, and our du dx is two. So dy dx becomes two e raised to power u. Remember, we don't have u in our equation, so our u was what two x. So it's e raised to power two x. You can see almost the same thing with that of logarithm equation. You differentiate whatever power that is, it, take it, take it back. And still write the function this way. So we'll be rounding up with this other second question on exponential. Find dy dx if y is equals e raised to power three x squared. Correct. Now remember the rule. We usually state that okay, let's write it plus two x plus four. We now say let u equals 3x squared plus 2x plus 4 so that our du dx will now be remember our normal law nx n minus 1 this is what we are applying here will now be 2 comes in which is 6x plus 2 times which is 2 our du dx is 2 why our y remember we've converted the whole of this to u becomes u raised to power u so we now have dy du to be e because it's still the same thing exponential doesn't change so with this we now have dy dx being dy du times du dx and our dy du is what e raised to power u times our du dx we got 6x plus 2 so the value of our dy dx will now be equal to this times this which is 6x plus 2 e raised to power u but remember we don't have u in our question so we bring it back to what we have so we have dy dx is equal to 6x plus 2 then e raised to power 3x squared plus 2x plus 4 Remember, that's the value of our e. You look at it here, yeah. u. And this is our final answer. The same thing still played out. When you're giving an exponential fraction, differentiate the power at the top, bring it behind, then rewrite the exponential equation, and that becomes your final answer. I would like to say a very big thank you, thank you, and thank you for joining this lesson. But to refresh your memory on what we've just discussed please take the test that will appear on your screen and always do well to use the lesson notes on the platform for a better information on the topic we've discussed thank you and see you in our next class